So you have a Twitter account and you do nothing with it except for posting few random updates. Well, it's time to ready your Twitter account to help grow your online business. Today we have Bridget Villard on the show. She focuses on providing social media services to online businesses. So let's get started and welcome Bridget. Hi Bridget, how are you? Great, how are you doing? I'm doing good. So before we begin our customary introduction about the guests, so tell us what you've been doing in the online world for the last 5, 6, 10, 12, 20, you can add in. <laughs> 20 years. <laughs> uh, well, I started as a teacher. Okay. And then actually I started as a secretary and then I became a teacher. That's what my student loan is for. Mm -hmm. And But I just, it naturally came to me to be a marketer. So... I started marketing and construction in 2009, and I've been doing business to business marketing on social media and content marketing since two, for the last 10 years. And the last four of it have been in WordPress. Um, I helped build up um, GiveWP, mm -hmm. the most robust online donation plugin for WordPress. Um, one of my clients, uh, former clients, Staging Pilot, just got acquired by Pantheon. Mm -hmm. So I work specifically, except for one client, that all my clients are WordPress products or services. I do have a coach. <laughs> awesome. And nowadays you specialize in providing social media services, right? Yep. And you don't build websites. I do not build websites. I don't even want to build my own. Well, I <laughs> can tell it's you, there. I can tell you, you're, you're a lucky one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's start with, you know, how Twitter can help a business grow their business. Like, let's take an example of an agency owner. Like, how important would be a Twitter among all the social media platforms would be for an agency owner to reach their potential customers or clients for their website design and development services? So one of the great things about Twitter mm -hmm. is that it's good for brand awareness, public relations, customer service, uh, loyalty building, relationship building, and also um, Complaints. Uh, promoting. Well, I mean, yeah. But, you know, it, Twitter gets a bad rap when you talk about pop culture. Uh, but the truth is, in the United States, regardless of what you like about the current or former president, because there were two extremes. We're living in a time where the president of the United States is accessible. Yeah. So Twitter breaks down geographical and class barriers. Yeah. So it doesn't matter. Like, it doesn't matter that I was a secretary and I don't have an MBA. The truth is, because of Twitter, I was able to become a self-made woman and build this career and show my work. Yeah. So a developer would show his work on GitHub. I show my work on Twitter. Yeah. Like I build relationships that have last and they've gone with me regardless of where I was. I still have those same friends that I met when I was doing construction uh, tweeting. So the thing is with Twitter is people read on Twitter, yeah. whereas Facebook is, Oh, I'm just going to post a selfie on with my friends. And then you leave. You just post your picture and, and you, then you leave. Yeah. But on Twitter, people scroll, 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 scroll. They're reading. And if they're smart, they use Twitter lists. Awesome. Now, let's talk about the Twitter profile in general. And then we'll begin from there onward. Like, I don't give a second look to a Twitter profile that doesn't have a profile image, the real person profile image, as you know, that silhouette default image as compared to that. Now, besides the profile image, what are the other important components that you look for a Twitter profile to have it a little polished starter look? Oh, yeah, for sure. You should have a header. <laughs> you should have a header image. Yeah. And I believe it's 1500 by 500 pixels. That keeps changing, I guess. It does keep changing, but that's what we have Canva for. Yeah. <laughs> Canva.com keeps up with those changes. It's pretty easy. It's free. There's no reason. Mm -hmm. There's no reason for anybody. You don't have to know Illustrator or Photoshop. It's just like, you know, it's me. 
So whether you want something polished or steal something from Unsplash or not steal it because it's attribution free, but uh, or just use one of your own images, it should not be pixelated. It should look good on mobile. Um, also, you should have a website. I would also encourage that your Twitter bio, which is 160 characters max, to actually say what you do in a way that your grandmother knows what it is. Not, you know, something funny or it, if it's too funny, like people don't get it, you know? Yeah. And, and you're trying to build relationships. So you want people to see that you're serious. I mean, I really don't like this new trend of these big, giant, long names like Bridget Willard is at WCEU. Just stop. Put, put WCEU in the bio and leave your name the way it is because yeah. it keeps changing on the feed. And when people are looking at the feed, it gets cut off. It looks stupid. You're still going to find, I'm just going to say it because everybody knows I think that. And people are going to find you if you use the hashtag anyway. So just use the hashtag in your bio. So like for me, I say what I do. And then I say, see you at PN6 because I'm going to Pressnomics because Joshua Strubble gave me a ticket. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> so that's what I'm doing. But you know, so it shouldn't be will work for money or um, I'm really Batman at night. I mean, that's put that on your slack. Okay. Yeah. Cause that's internal inside jokes. Yeah. Make it, make it as SEO keyword friendly as possible because Twitter will suggest follows and you want to be suggested. Yeah. It's like a mini website, like be serious about it. So cover image, profile image, your title, your description. What about hashtags in your profile description? Do they you help? Can put, they can help. I wouldn't hashtag every word. I would put one or two hashtags at the end. Okay. I mean, I would definitely make sure you spell WordPress correctly. <laughs> uh, be in the capitals. Yeah, I, I would use comp as complete sentences as you can. Capitalization exists for a reason. Yeah. Um, I would definitely use hashtags at the end if you're going somewhere. But this weird trend with putting in your name, that just needs to die. People, people don't think, they just see other people doing it and then they keep doing it. But, you know, that's not, it just looks stupid. Okay. <laughs> yes, it does. And what about the Twitter profile URL or the username? Like oh, the username. So I, if you can, I would camel case it. And you can do that in um, your profile and settings. Um, I would definitely use capital letters, especially if it's your name. Now for me, it's you two can be guru because you can only have 15 letters and I wasn't enough for A. <laughs> so, um, and then my other one is just my childhood nickname, Gigi. But I don't really tweet business stuff there that much. It's more like for me to complain about dating. <laughs> awesome. So let's talk about growing your Twitter presence now. Just like any other platform, Twitter is all, also about number games, right? So the classic question, like a lot of people who enter into the, hey, how do I get more followers? More means more. And that more keeps on adding more, more, more. Yeah, that's tricky. So one of the things that Twitter does that most most other platforms don't do is it kind of um, requires these. Unless your unless your account is verified, you have to have a one to one ratio in order to grow um, beyond these kind of glass ceilings that they don't talk about. But I have personally found them at two thousand, five thousand, nine thousand, fourteen thousand and 19,000 followers. Mm -hmm. This is 20 is as high as I took my first business Twitter account, uh, Riggins Construction. So the, if the reason, so you should follow everybody back unless they're some kind of spam, okay? And what you do is you list them. You put them on a list. WordPress professionals, products, uh, WordPress companies, WordPress community, professional development, graphics, and design. You can look at mine. You can steal the names. It's not like genius. It's just, it's a way for you to curate your own content and to spend time 
on Twitter more efficiently. I have a blog post and a video on BridgetWillard.com slash Twitter lists, no punctuation, because I talk about it so much. I was just on a training call actually uh, with a social media manager for a company and they had no idea that Twitter has lists. But my WordPress friends, you guys love your filters and hooks. So use uh, <laughs> Twitter lists because it filters out your stream. And, and you can make a list for your clients or your super fans, and then you spend more time reading that. Yeah, my next question was related to Twitter lists. Like, is it just a mere organizational tool, or does it also help enhance your Twitter presence? Yes. <laughs> Both. Cool. So, um, so when you when you put somebody on a list, uh, it helps Twitter suggest you. That's this is my sneaking suspicion, only based on ten years of experience. You know, I I don't know for sure, but yes, it's an organizational tool. So I go and I build my clients' uh, content calendars, and I use Twitter to do it. So if we have if one of my clients has strategic partners. And I'm going to favor those people. I'm going to favor the team, the, the tweets from our internal team over anybody else. So you want to get, um, you want to be able to read those tweets, but also then you can use that tool as, as to what you share on LinkedIn, what you share on Facebook. And more importantly, Twitter lists let you do something that people don't do enough on Twitter, which is listening. So instead of having uh, these personas that are made up, stereotypes, you can actually know what your customers are thinking because they're tweeting everything about it. You know who watched Game of Thrones, you know who hated the ending, and you know who thought Khaleesi should have whatever, okay? Like, you, you know everything about what they're thinking, you know their politics, you know, if they like Coke or Pepsi, you don't have to make up some dumb persona, uh, you know, and it's funny because I talked about this when I was in uh, WordCamp Nijmegen uh, last year. Mm -hmm. you, you, we like to say, okay, here's Bob. And Bob is 25. He lives in his parents' basement. He um, develops software for WordPress, make, writes plugins takes a shower twice a week, um, likes to watch um, Star Trek, um, goes to Comic-Con, doesn't have a girlfriend, and drinks craft beer and collects action figures. Okay? Yeah. It, if that wasn't a persona, we would call it a stereotype. And stereotypes are racist. Like... <laughs> Like, you know, but in marketing, everybody's like, well, what's the persona? So I was talking to one of my friends, uh, Jeroen and Brecht, across the table. We were, I was telling them this. And one guy goes, I'm Bob. It was funny, right? But the other guy goes, no, that's not me at all. Right. So my friend Jeroen Roddy, guess what? He doesn't, he doesn't live with his parents. <laughs> um, he has his own home. He's married. He doesn't drink craft beer anymore. His favorite movies are not the Avengers or <laughs> Star Trek or Star Wars. It is um, Shawshank Redemption. <laughs> okay? And he has his own successful company, and he showers every day. Yeah. Right? So Bob, like, Bob was him maybe 10 years ago. But that's not who your own is now. And if you bother to read the tweets of the people who are, you can tweak your persona and allow your persona to grow. Because who people were back when WordPress just started is not who people are now. Yeah. My friends that I've known for the last four years in WordPress are not having kids. They're buying houses. Mm -hmm. They're getting divorced. <laughs> They're wearing ties. Like, we are all growing and maturing, which means the, the persona is not accurate anymore. Yeah. So you can spend your time on Twitter listening, reading. You don't have to respond, but then you can know what people are thinking. So when you're managing, a, say, Twitter profile of a business, 
comp or a company and you get a few followers to that account how do you decide which account to follow back are there like some red flags that you follow oh red flags definitely super sexy girls <laughs> And any military guy that's name is William 96742, who is single and has a son and is a civil engineer. That's like the girl version of porn. So uh, I don't follow that. If you don't have a profile picture, I don't follow you. Um, but everybody else gets followed. 90% of them get listed. Okay. And, and then I use who.unfollow.me. Uh -huh. it, when I do my Twitter maintenance every every week, who followed and unfollowed I, you? Yeah, because I'm going to unfollow them because <laughs> I need. You have to have the one to one ratio to grow. Yep. And if you don't do it when your when your count is small, you're going to be in trouble. You know, you're going to be in trouble when it gets to two thousand and you're only following three hundred. You can't follow any more people back. So, like, I really wish Twitter would stop having that rule. It's the only one that requires that. Uh, but until they change it, that's just the way you have to do it. I don't think, to go back to your original question, I don't think more is better. Just focus on the ones you have mm -hmm. and build those relationships. Stop pressing retweet all the time and press the most underutilized button on Twitter reply <laughs> it's for conversations it started as text messaging it's for having conversations so pressing the retweet button ends the conversation there's no way to respond to that yeah and my next question is kind of you know related to this like are there any do's and don'ts for a business twitter profile to reply or engage in a discussion on twitter because a lot of controversial topics get highlighted on Twitter and being a business Twitter profile, you don't want to end up in the wrong side of the fence. Yeah. Unless that's part of your brand. I mean, if you want to, if your whole brand wants to be hardline on um, saving sloths, then you need to talk about it. I mean, if you're really that committed to having only customers that, you know, are vegans, then fine, you can be militant like PETA. I personally think that it's better not to talk about sex, religion, or politics. Mm -hmm. It's pretty standard. It's been cultural norm for hundreds and thousands of years. But at the same time, you know, it's just funny because like in WordPress, in WordPress we talk about being inclusive and not having these these barriers but in fact many wordpress people are super vocal about their very liberal politics which excludes the more conservative folks um not to mention people that aren't part of the united states politics <laughs> um but then i've seen it with my friends from india being like pretty aggressive talking about politics i think that if you wanted to do that uh, you should do what I did and have your own personal account separate from your business. That's why yeah. I have two personal accounts because I used to be heavily involved in politics and helping political campaigns here in California with the Senate run and stuff like that. But you know what? I don't want to spend my time doing that anymore because I just care about people. And when you care about people, you should, in order to build your business, you have to build relationships. And we build yeah. relationships about commonalities, yeah. not differences. Yeah. So it's strategically a bad idea unless your whole brand is willing. Like if your brand is selling CBD oil, then you can take that hard line because it's part of how you make money. Mm -hmm. And there are people who build websites specifically for the porn industry. Yeah. And if that and yes, you should be talking about sex and you should be highlighting those porn stars that as your clients, right? But if we're just talking about you make a WordPress form, you don't need to be talking about politics. Yeah. That's that's interesting conversation because when you are dealing with someone with who has an opposite, you know, 
you know things or thoughts about what you're here you are not trying to find a common ground here you're just highlighting the things you feel and you're trying to you know suppress the other person here you are what you're talking is wrong this is right what i'm talking so there's no common ground there so finding a common you know characteristics with other person is a better option than dealing with someone who's completely opposite to you right i mean there's enough to talk about with tabs versus spaces right yep <laughs> Okay, now let's talk about the content that you post on, you know, Twitter, like, let's go back to the same example of a Twitter profile of an agency doing website design and development. How can one decide on the content of tweets to be posted on such type of Twitter account? Like, is there any methodology for high level research <laughs> to get on with it? Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, you should be doing case studies mm -hmm. with your clients. And I, and I mean, more than just a screenshot with a link to their website. Okay. Like what, what, what did it look like before? What does it look like now? Screenshot it. If you want to go crazy, make a little video of the code or, you know, something like that. Mm -hmm. But you don't know once you, once you launch that website, you don't know if they're going to change it. You don't want to just have a link because you don't want the people just going over there to their website and they might change it. And you're like, Oh, that's the worst thing I've ever seen in my life. Now you have nothing to link from your site. Okay. You should be answering pre-sales questions on your blog and that's what you tweet. Okay. So if you keep getting questions in your help scout or your email, like what is your price? What does it cost? You can't just keep saying it depends. You, you need, you need to answer those questions because real people don't know how much a website costs. I spent a lot of time at Facebook groups and like, Oh, $500. That's a lot. I'm like, you just stole a website for $500. Yeah. It should be between 15 and 2000 for one built with Elementor, built with Elementor <laughs> or Beaver Builder, right? Because it's so much more than that. You know, I, yeah, I built my own website and it was fine. And my bounce rate was 78%. And then Rhonda Nygaard from Fat Dog Creatives redesigned my homepage. And guess what? My time on site went up overnight. Uh, up one minute and my bounce rate went down to 30 something percent mm -hmm. just the home page okay so yeah you could do it yourself I did it myself but it was it was okay but mm -hmm. you're trying you're hiring a professional for their time so to me I would say how much your website is I would say we could do three pages of your website for fifteen hundred dollars this is what you get establish the expectations of how you work with them. Write blog posts on, this is how we do client intake. This is what we charge for uh, discovery, that kind of thing. Why do you need a website? If you focus on lawyers, then write about why lawyers need websites. You know, mm -hmm. those kind of answer those questions that you get all the time. And you know, sticking to the topic of content for Twitter, like where does hiring a copywriter for creating such micro content fit in? Like should businesses actively consider this? Copyright for tweets? Yep. No like copyright. a special person who can actually write what to tweet. There's no, oh, copywriting. Yep. Oh, I thought you meant like copyright. Like no. this tweet is copyrighted by <laughs> no, Richard it's Willard. Copywriting. It's C O P Y copywriting. W R I T. Yeah, W R I T. Yeah, yep. sorry. <laughs> I used to be a songwriter, so when you say, even though I'm also a copywriter, <laughs> 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 yeah, um, I get paid to write tweets. Yeah, because it's difficult to but convince. I usually, I usually take it from their website, though. <laughs> Yeah, but still, you've got to use your brain to, you know, craft. Them. Yeah, I mean, no, for sure. But it, the copy on the website is what you guys agreed on. Yeah. You as an agency, as an agency owner, it might not be good copy, but, you know, usually I try to like ask a question. I use a hashtag. I have a specific format I like to do. I like to use spaces. Um, I don't believe in using emoji in a tweet. It breaks it up. I like to use hashtags only at the end, not in the words, because people scan, they don't read. Yeah. And, if, and you are, when we're scanning, we're looking for words. So once you break those words up with emoji, you just made that tweet 10, 15, 20% more difficult to read.
<laughs> yeah. And what about sharing content from other websites in form of article links and inspirational quotes on a business Twitter profile? A hundred percent. You should be doing it. You should only tweet back to yourself mm -hmm. about a third of the time. And what about tweeting your own content? Like how many times should you sh be sharing one piece of content over and over again? Um, you, oh, so Twitter specifically has a high tolerance, the culture of Twitter for repetition. So when I repeat a tweet, I like to kind of change the language a little bit. Usually um, if it's an article from my site, I like to, pick a different sentence to tweet it out and um, I cycle it. Now for myself, I use revival post. Okay. Um, and it, I think I have it on tweeting every 11 and a half hours right now. Um, I don't want it too much cause I know I tweet a lot myself, um, mm -hmm. my own hands touching. Uh, but for my clients, it's a third of the time. Okay. Now let's talk about how you analyze and you know see the performance of your Twitter activity. So personally, I prefer to use TweetDeck to manage multiple Twitter accounts, which is your preferred tool for Twitter management. Hootsuite. Okay, so you do all. I don't like TweetDeck since Twitter bought it. <laughs> but it looks the same. <laughs> no, it, did you ever use the black and orange one? Yeah, yeah. The colors it's are the, colors no, are crazy, but, but then it also like the feed goes crazy like this. I don't like their columns. Uh, so, but Hootsuite's the same on my phone because a lot of times I'm checking people's clients on my phone. So uh -huh. that's what's uh, that's what matters to me, and so I want that same experience. So I like Hootsuite. Whatever, six of one, half a dozen. And I still use TweetDeck even to schedule posts. So what do you use for scheduling? I guess Hootsuite? Uh, I don't use Hootsuite for scheduling, but I can. It, I have. Um, I use a buffer competitor that's in private beta. Okay. Uh, that's not even being developed, but it's called MiniDeck. Okay. And um, it's like buffer. And if my friend Luke ever has it die, I will just go to buffer. <laughs> but I, you know, this is what's good about having friends that are developers. <laughs> Benefits, you know, you they they can look for you know test dummies like okay man, this person does this, so he will test it out my app before I you know put a price tag on this one. Yeah, I love it. But yeah, I, otherwise I would use Buffer, and I I don't um, schedule um, anything else with Hootsuite. Just. I, I did try it for LinkedIn for a while. I don't like the way it looks. I like to, I like to post natively on LinkedIn. Facebook has its own scheduling. So I just schedule for Twitter that way. And which tool do you use to analyze the performance of a Twitter profile, say on month to month basis? Um, Twitter.com. Okay. The analytics on Twitter are awesome. Okay. And uh, so I, when I'm doing it for my clients, I do a Google sheet. Um, and I, if they're tweeting once a day, then I kind of like have these columns, professional development, WordPress, link to the site. If it's three times a day, then there's one of each in each day like that. And then, so I build the content and I schedule it out. But before I build that content calendar, I go look at the analytics to see what's been happening the last 28 days. And I go to the top tweets and I want to see what's resonating. And if something is really resonating, uh, something's, you know, got a lot of engagement and impressions and that's telling me I'm on the right track. Now I've been doing this for so long uh, with like just almost totally with WordPress. I used to do, um, three different WordCamp accounts too. And now I just do WordCamp Orange County. So mm -hmm. I'm like pretty, and I spent two years on the marketing team for Make WordPress. So pretty like familiar with what works. Mm -hmm. um, but I still like to see, and I still look every two weeks, I'm looking. I just spend like, I don't know, five minutes, just scan. Because sometimes things are different. Now, if I have more information about a client, mm -hmm like I do about myself, because sometimes I'm only getting parts of the marketing, right? Okay. For me, I, I want to look at Google Analytics. 
I want to see what's, you know, what's the biggest driver? Uh, what page is working? Uh, where's my highest time on site? Time on site or average session duration is what matters to me because that means they're reading. Yeah. We want them reading. I know I look, I mean, it's cool that my bounce rate went down, but honestly, I really just want them reading. If the article I wrote answered their question, yeah. then they should leave. And that's a bounce. So that's fine. But, you know, I want to see at Google Analytics and Twitter's own analytics are in combination are really powerful. Yeah, I asked you this. Maybe you were using some other secret beta tool for generating nope. analytics. Twitter's analytics are amazing. I mean, it tells you demographics, education, married level, what people are like. But, you know, it's funny because actually, well, it's not really that funny. It's not surprising. <laughs> but, I mean, before people would say, oh, I bet you have a lot of female followers. No, because I'm in WordPress. It's mostly men. Yeah, that's, that's mostly, kind of true. Mostly men, mostly only with a high school education, <laughs> right? Because we don't go to college to be a developer. Yeah. You go to free code camp or Linda or LinkedIn learning or you're paying for, you know, Chris Coyer's course on CSS or something like that. We're not going to college college because you don't need to. It's a waste of money. But it's just so funny. You know, it's a high level of reading level but not a high level of formal education. So it helps you figure out like, if you have people who have a high school reading level, then that tells you how you should write your blog. Well, newspapers write your blog for a fifth grade reading level. Mm -hmm. So that's what you should do. Because you want it to be easy because people scan, they don't read, they scan. So when you share the final analytics report with a client, like what are the few matrices you highlight in making them understand that the Twitter profile is growing or not growing as a result of your efforts on it? So I build a Google sheet um, that tracks month over month because I think it's easier to see okay. in a linear fashion. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the number of tweets, the number of impressions, the number of profile visits, the number of mentions, and the number of new followers. And that's just what's on Twitter's own native analytics. Okay. But the ratio I like is tweets to profile visits. And I like that to be over 0 0.2. It's a, it's a ratio that I developed uh, when I was working with Give. And uh, we found that when it's, we really want people to go see your profile. If people go to the profile and then guess what happens? They're probably going to go to your website. Yeah. This is why I'm saying the whole like go look at your Google Analytics you know but um, so that's the thing that matters to me I like that I like the um, profile visits to be up and the impressions so I just did a case study with Codebrain Media they're my new client um, they're a WordPress agency it's actually pinned to my Twitter profile yeah, I, at I, the read moment. That. I read that yeah and uh, so their 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 impressions more than doubled. Their profile visits doubled. Like that's good because they're trying to get more. They want to get more work, you know. And yeah. because of that, guess what happens? She's like, "Well, I need to really focus on redesigning my site now," because she's getting enough visitors to justify spending the time working on your own site. You know, here I don't know if you know this expression, but we have this expression here called. It says, a uh, cobbler's children have no shoes. Yeah. <laughs> it's so stupid, but people use that as like, well, you know, I don't have time to build my own website. Well, your website is your moneymaker. Yeah. And if you don't have a good Twitter account, then I wouldn't hire you to do Twitter. And if you don't have a good website, I'm not going to hire you to make mine, right? So you have to focus on what's your marketing efforts, right? So a lot of times I will share my own Twitter stats, because I'm not going to share our clients. That's not unless they give me permission, like, like okay. CodeBrain did. But that's the thing is like, that's internal data. And then if it's not working, if things aren't working and they're not resonating, usually I say, let's work on your content marketing. Mm -hmm. You need, you have to have blog posts. Yeah. You have to have something to share. <laughs> 
Yeah, that's right. the end result because you're sending people to view your content. If your content is not there or it's like crap, no one will bother about it. And no one will yeah. bother following you on Twitter. Forget about, you know, coming back. And that's what I'll say. It's not my problem. Like you hire me to do Twitter. I'm sending them to your website. If it's not converting, it's not me. It's yeah. you. Fix your website. Yeah, perfectly makes sense because, you know, <laughs> and you know, most of the small businesses, they do hesitate in even investing in copywriting services, forget about Twitter handling and all that, even the basic level of, you know, uh, writing blog posts, they will say, Oh, I'll handle it. I'll just ask my secretary to write it. And that written piece of content doesn't make any sense or, you know, associate with the business they are in. Yeah. I mean, I mean, it's, it's possible. It can happen. I was a secretary. I, that's what I did. <laughs> But I mean, I'm not, but I'm pretty smart, you know, I'm a smart <laughs> cookie. So the thing is like, do you, do you want people to hire you? Yes yeah. or no? Then spend 50 or a hundred dollars on somebody to write a blog post for you once a month. Yeah. You should be investing in the marketing of your business. Yep. And if you're not, you know, people say, oh, I have referrals. Really? Well, it's like a coal engine, you know, mm -hmm. on a train. You have to like keep shoveling the coal. If you don't, you know, maybe the train will keep going for a while, but you have to keep burning the coal to make the steam. Okay. You can't just stop. So you need that, you need that cadence in your marketing. So I would say at least invest in one blog post a month. Yeah. At the very least Google, you know, you can, you want to be on page one, Google wants you to publish. They want you to publish things that are helpful. So pre-sales questions, uh, pain points are the perfect topics. And, and think about the things. And if you don't want to write, then make a video. Yeah. But put it on your, put it on the internet, on your web property. Yeah. Just curious, like for business accounts that you handle the Twitter thing, like, do you also handle the direct messages that they get on their profiles or is it like the company domain name? Um, I will alert them to it. It depends on the client. Uh, some of my clients um, get notified, but either way, I usually like message them in Slack. So and so has a direct message to you, blah, 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 blah. Okay. Um, but, you know, everybody's different, but most of my clients have a Slack channel. <laughs> That's another tool, right? So many of them. Well, I mean, I work with WordPress nerds. <laughs> They're all in Slack and I got one on WhatsApp. So, Okay, now shift, let's shift gears from Twitter and talk about your toolbox. So what are your current five favorite tools that power your online business? Well, WordPress, <laughs> clearly, because okay. you've got to have a website. Yep. Um, I'm hosted with Pressable. Okay. Um, I like that they actually bill every month. It's an actual bill that I pay monthly, not just, oh, it costs this much a month. It's an actual monthly bill. <laughs> um, Hootsuite. Okay. So WordPress, Pressable. Uh, Pressable, Hootsuite, obviously Twitter, but I think you're talking about other kinds of tools. Canva.com mm. is huge for me. Mm -hmm. uh, I pay for that also. And then FreshBooks. For your accounting? Yep. Okay, so, I love FreshBooks. So my next question is, which is your recommended web hosting service? So I guess the answer is the oh, one. Press, who well, the something network. managed. I, w I, would, I, would, I mean, they were my clients, so I switched from SiteGround uh -huh. uh, to that. And you know what? I don't have time to be w worrying about yeah. security updates and stuff like that. If I have a problem, I just want to email them. Bradley's there. He's going to fix it. That's why I pay $25 a month. I spend more on tequila. I spent more on tequila last night. Like <laughs> this ridiculous, this, I actually have a blog post called 25 things I spend more than $25 a month on. I, I, if you're not spending at least $25 in web hosting, you're doing it wrong. Yeah. Like I feel like that is a base level. Even Pagely is it more than that, but they have North stack now that's coming out. Um, yeah, that's absolutely. kind of, um, graduated, but either way it would be something that's managed, uh, Pressful, Pagely, liquid web, um, 
WP engine, I guess. But like, uh, to me, I don't like the way they're, I don't like their culture anymore. They're different. Who's WP but, engine? WP engine, yeah. Well, they've got a lot of money, so the culture changes. Well, I mean, it changes because they're hiring people outside of WordPress who don't know WordPress. Yeah. And that's, that's a disadvantage. We want people, I mean, of course, Pantheon is awesome. Like, to me, it matters. I want to see that they treat employees well. I don't want a big turnover. Pantheon has a good uh, level, but they're, like, too developer-y for me. Like, yeah. they're really into, like, GitHub and stuff like that. I, that's not BridgetWillard.com. <laughs> I just need a, you know, I just need to be able to, like, not worry about stuff. Cool. So I know you don't build website, but I'll still ask you this question. Probably you will have an answer, which is a recommended page builder plugin. Beaver oh, I builder use Beaver element. Builder. Yeah, I use Beaver Builder. I love Beaver Builder. I use it for all my landing pages, my pricing table. Uh, I've, I worked because I, uh, I do work for agencies where I like load content on pages and write blog posts and stuff. Mm -hmm. I've used Elementor. Not my favorite. I I feel like it's really more complicated than it should be. Yeah, it has a lot of um, options there in the UI. Yeah, I, I you know, I I almost hate it, but then some of my friends really love it. You know what? It's just it's like a purse. This is the thing. It's like you. I have several different purpose purses for different reasons, right? I'm not <laughs> yeah. gonna bring my little black purse with tons of beads on it that's for going to a wedding okay yeah. and then i have a bigger purse when i need a bunch of stuff if i'm at a word camp i'm using my backpack and if <laughs> i'm out dancing i have one that goes across my shoulder like it depends on what you need but yeah beaver builder i love robbie robbie's awesome and um they need to name their beaver he does not have a name it's annoying. I'm going to call him Buddy the Beaver until Brent gives him a name. Calling you out, Brent. Okay. And what is your recommended email marketing service if you use one? So I use Postmatic, but they're also a client. And okay. uh, it delivers your blog posts either in a digest or as it happens, depending upon how the people subscribe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then they can reply to the email and it's a comment. I love it. I've been using it for years and years and years. And lastly, any upcoming tool or service that has caught your eye attention recently? Upcoming tool or service that caught my eye. Well, I did just download this app called Otter. Um, Otter.ai? I think so. Let me just check really quick. Oh, yeah. change audio yeah, to otter. text. It's an otter to otter. Yep. otter. Yep, I've yeah, used it. I use can, it often. You can use, you could do like six, 600 minutes for free. Yep. And it's very kind of, it's close to perfect. You will still have to edit some parts of it, but mostly it works really good. Yeah. I'm pretty surprised. Um, I mumble a lot. So I could type, I used to be able to type 72 words a minute. So I usually don't need that. But with, but Jason Tucker uses Siri a lot or the native one. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to try this because sometimes I'm setting out to write a blog post for a client because I do that too. And, um, and I just get stuck. And it's so really sometimes good. I just need to say it. And then I'll go fix it and edit it later. You can even record your audio file or a video on computer and extract the audio file and upload it on their website and they will create the text within like five minutes of processing. Yeah. So it, it really works. I really like that. And then uh, just as a bonus, Screencast-O-Matic because I've been doing a lot more videos again. Okay. Uh, tutorial. And I, I paid the $18 for the next level service and it does the same thing. Like it will make the transcription, the captions. Mm -hmm. I don't think I could download the file though, but I still like, to me, that's still worth it because I want those. I want the transcription there. I, I had to edit. I have to edit it a lot, but still it's I, it really helpful. Cool. So before we wrap this episode, any last message or piece of advice to someone who is stuck with their Twitter profile and don't know what to do with it? 
besides, of course, deleting it if you don't intend to use it. No, no, don't delete it. No, don't do that. Just spend five minutes a day in the home feed. Look for one or two things that you can reply to and do that. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, that's... Be a polite human being. That's my marketing strategy. Start small and be polite. Be humble. Yeah. And always be ready to learn. That's what I tell everyone, you know. Never stop learning. Well, we're in tech. It's going to change in two minutes. (laughs) When's the next Gutenberg uh, release coming out? We're press 5.2.2. We can just have an argument now. Like, I hate Gutenberg. Probably you love Gutenberg. No, I hate it. Sorry, then we can't fight because we both hate it, so... (laughs) Well, the thing is, there's certain things I like about and certain things I don't because I'm the person that was meant to help. I'm the blogger. I'm the person who's uh, the implementer. I'm loading content on on client websites, right? So do you but use I, Gutenberg while posting content on client websites these days? If they have it, then I have to use it. That's painful, I, right? Well, I like the code view and I just like, I, I had a client, I have a, I have a client and I said, let me know when you install classic editor because I, because I literally put a blog post in and it was totally fine. And then three days later, it said content not available, changed to HTML, content not available for every single block. And I'm like, blah, 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 something I would have to beep out. I was so mad because I'm like, I I don't have time for this. You know, go, go test it out. on Like, I love WordPress. That's not about the people building it. I mean, one of my best friends in the whole world is Mary Baum and she's the release lead right now. I love her. I love all my friends at WordPress, but I also right now love the classic editor plugin. Same here. But even though, (laughs) you know, I go back to Gutenberg every major release and test it out, like how it works. But most of that time I end up getting disappointed because something breaks on a foundation level on the next update, which is kind of a iffy territory when and you don't you cannot spend time on fixing things when you are doing client work and all that, because that can really put you under a lot of stress. And behind schedule and who's paying for that? No one. (laughs) Right. So I don't have time for that. When it's awesome at 5.5, then we'll talk about it. Yeah, probably after US Word completed uh, this year, yeah. maybe they will announce something really good. By that I time, mean, I think the fourth phase will be done. Yeah. I'm not against progress. I'm just saying, like, I've recorded all these videos about how to use Twitter, the gear button. Guess what? A couple of months later, it's not the gear anymore. It's the shish kebab, three dots. <laughs> Tech changes. You have to be humble. You have to continuously learn because either way, one day we're all going to be using Gutenberg or we're going to leave WordPress. It says. Yeah, that would be the story. Everything would be in line on Gutenberg till the time Gutenberg matures. It's still in like in the garden state as, as of now. So <laughs> a lot of time. Okay, Bridget, thank you so much for your time. It thank was you. amazing talking to you. Have a good day. You too.